So today we're going to talk about the election process. On the screen I have a timeline of when these things happen. So if you'll make sure you have this timeline written down. Caucuses, which we're going to talk about all of these in more detail. Uh, Iowa has the very first caucus. New Hampshire has the very first primary. The conventions happen at the end of the summer. And then the general election is in November. Alright, so more details. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting this part. Um, the whole time this is going on, candidates are going to be campaigning uh, with commercials and billboards and signs and, and flyers. But anyway, all right, so we're going to get more detailed. Caucuses and primaries are where they're going to pick who they want to represent their political party. So the difference between a caucus, a caucus is a meeting in which people get together to discuss what, which, which candidate they would want to represent their uh, party. And a primary is when you're going to vote. States get to choose whether or not they want a caucus or do they want a primary. Um, and the whole point is to pick one person. So, like, for example, in the last election, these are all the people who were running for the, Rep or, well, excuse me, it's not all of them. It was just a few of them. There was a ton of them, uh, of Republican candidates that were running for the Republican ticket. So who is going to be the one person, the one Republican, going against the one Democrat that the Democrats are going to pick? So... In 2012, Obama was the incumbent, so we already knew who that person was, and we didn't have to have a caucus or a primary um, because it, there was nobody running against him from the Democratic side. However, in the 2016 election, we have Marco Rubio, um, we have Scott Walker, Ben Carson, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, um, Bush, and then we had Carly Filarera, and I always mess up her name. And so we, different states, like in Iowa, they're going to have a caucus, and, and they're going to have the very first one, and they're going to say, all right, we want this person. So say they pick Jeb Bush to be their one person. Now that's just Iowa. They're going to keep on moving to the next state, and if Jeb Bush were to keep winning over and over and over in most of the states, other people might start dropping out of the, of the race. Like Scott Walker dropped out pretty early in the 2016 election um, or campaigning cycle because he wasn't winning and he wasn't getting a whole lot of support. Um, and so this is a good indicator by the, like, if a bunch of states aren't picking a person, then they're probably not going to win the big dog, the big election. Um, so, side note, an incumbent has an advantage. So if we're looking at these two people right here, um, most students now will recognize one of these two. Most students recognize this guy because he was president and this was the guy who was running against him. This is John Kerry. Uh, and when John Kerry ran against George Bush, um, people knew that George Bush was a sure thing. They knew he wasn't going to go crazy when he got to the White House or something. Um, so they understand that they're familiar with, with the office and people are familiar with the person's name and what they're going to do. Um, these two people right here, uh, if you look at these, I bet you anything that most people are going to know that who Bill Clinton is and they're not really going to recognize this other guy. Um, so now there, before we move on, there are two different types of primaries. We have an open primary and a closed primary. Um, and Whenever you register to vote, you're going to pick, are you going to have, are you going to be Republican, Democratic, or a third party, or are you going to be un unaffiliated? And if you go ahead and you say that you belong to a certain party, then you, then you get to vote. Sorry, my daughter's talking in her sleep. Um... If you go ahead and say that you belong to a certain party, then that means that you are can you can vote in that primary. So in an open primary, it doesn't matter um, it, whether or not you're registered Democrat or Republican. Um, you get to vote in that primary. They're not going to check. Um, oh, are you Republican? You can't vote in the Democratic one. If it's closed, you can only vote in the like Republicans can only vote in the Republican primary, and Democrats can only vote in the Democratic party. Um, now, the advantage and disadvantage to that, in a closed primary, that means that independents, if you're not registered as Republican, then that means you're not going to be able to vote, which is kind of harmful because uh, you're not going to be able to get a real feel for how people are going to 
really vote in the election. However, in an open primary, they can also work to a disadvantage because that means that, say, you're registered uh, to be in the, uh, a Republican, you could go to the Democratic primary and you could go vote and you could vote for someone that you know that your Republican candidate could beat. Um, so you can kind of try, you could, you and a bunch of other people could try to manipulate a situation. Um, so there are pros and cons to both of these. Now, the National Convention is at the end of the summer, and this is when they officially announce who is going to represent their party. So, at the very end of the summer, they're going to say, we, and, and in 2008 um, and in 2012, um, they had a National Convention. The, here's the Democratic one. I can tell that because there's Michelle Obama, and she came out, and she was the one who said that her husband was going to be, was nominated by the National Democratic Party. Now, what that clearly says, if she's doing the announcing, is that they already know who's going, that the Democrats already know who's going to represent the Democratic Party. And they usually do. Um, by the end of the summer, it's very clear which candidate from that party has got the most support. Over here, they have Mitt Romney. Um, and it's just a big party where they're dropping balloons and people get together and they're super pumped about their political party and how they're planning on running the government once their candidate wins. Uh, after the Nash Convention is the general election. So from the end, around August, September, um, which is when your Nash Convention is, then they campaign the entire time until the general election. The general election is the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Now, it's very specific because they wanted to make sure it was crystal clear when their national election day was going to be. Um, they picked, they picked uh, November because they wanted to make sure that people would um, be done with all their crops and everything they're going to be able to travel before the deep snow and stuff came. So this is when you're going to officially pick do we want the Democrat or do we want the Republican to represent us um, for president. Now there are a lot of other offices that also happen during that time and it's really important that you make sure that you know this. That at the federal level we don't just pick the president. We also pick U.S. Senators and U.S. House of Representative members. We also pick the governor, North Carolina senators, and then North Carolina House of Representatives members, and we pick our mayor, city council, school board, as well as um, you can pick the, the person who, the mortician for the county. Um, like in, say, North Carolina, we pick uh, the person who represent or who takes the secretary of labor, and it's her job to uh, make sure elevators work and so she signs off on all of those and I know she keeps on winning um, because it's the same woman if you get in an elevator you can see her picture that she has said that this elevator is okay to travel in um, so it's not just about these two people right here and in fact these are the ones who make the decisions that impact us every single day um, curfews and and whether or not um, you know do you have to have your grass mode can I have chickens here or do I got to wait somewhere else the stuff that's uh, detailed has got to be taken care of by local and state stuff so now it's important for that we remember that the president is elected by the Electoral College now this is the 2008 um, race because Obama went against uh, John McCain and so Obama won all the blue states and McCain won the red states. Now it looks pretty even however it matters based on population. Now every state is going to have at least two senators and one house representative member and that's where they decide the numbers is how many people are in Congress. Um, so that's why this is you have to have 270 electoral votes in order to win. Um, how do we know how the public feels about things? Um, they take Gallup polls that are taken daily to tell politicians. So are people feeling that Donald Trump uh, would be a good candidate or not? And that was something that they were asking every single day. They were calling people and asking them. They also um, decide, like, where should, if you're running for president, how do you even know where to go? If I'm looking at these states and if I know that Barack Obama won North Carolina in 2008, but in 2012 he lost North Carolina. Then what does that mean about North Carolina? It means that North Carolina is a swing state and so candidates would, they were constantly polling North Carolinians and there are signs and ads and commercials everywhere because North Carolina, North, a lot of North Carolinians really didn't know who they're going to vote for. Um, and they, so politicians have to do these polls to figure out 
am I going to win in this state or not? And if I'm not going to win, do I need, or if it looks like I'm not going to win, should I go over there and campaign? Um, canvassing is one way that they can campaign, but typically like the Donald Trumps and the Barack Obamas are not going to be going canvassing because canvassing is when you're walking door to door to door, uh, just talking to people and trying to get them on your side. Um, or, uh, people will call your constituents because if I'm an elected official, the people that I represent are called my constituents. Um, and you, once you call them, you can try to get bumper stickers and hats and t-shirts and, and signs. Um, and once I get that kind of stuff out and get people on, on board to support me, that also helps me as well. Um, whenever we're talking about camping, um, campaigning is more than just rallies. Um, because there's a lot more that go into it. Debates are also ways that uh, candidates can campaign. Um, they can appear in places uh, and look um, like a like a normal person, um, as well as using different types of propaganda. Um, so let's get a little bit more specific about these. Uh, well, it's very expensive. You need to watch that video. Other things that people have to vote on in elections: um, a recall. A recall is when you have to decide: Do we want this candidate to represent us anymore or not? Um, uh, like for example, Scott Walker ends up. Uh, people wanted to recall him because he was. Um, well, that's just long story short. People didn't like him anymore, and so they voted. Do we want to get rid of him or not? And um, in a town close to where we live, um, there is a a mayor who made a a racist remark. Um, and the people of the town had it, they decided to recall him. So there was an election and they voted to get rid of him. A referendum is when you vote on an issue. Um, so first you have to have the initiative and somebody has to say, hey, I vote that we legalize marijuana. And for this one right here, this was in California. Um, or someone said, hey, let's make it so marriage is between one man and one woman. Um, now once we have the initiative, um, it'll be on the ballot and it'll be called a proposition. Um, so it's the initiative is your idea of, hey, let's make it so hamburgers are illegal. And they're like, okay, let me write down our proposal, which is your proposition. And then when people vote on it, it's called a referendum. This is the stuff that students always forget. So I hope you, that you uh, put a star next to this in your notes.